When heating engineers see bigger and more complex homes, they instantly think. Twin boilers, twin cylinders, low-loss headers, buffers, pumps and never-ending thermostats. Manufacturers have convinced us that more complexity means better performance, that it's smarter, more advanced and the only way forward. But it isn't. Over-engineered systems are harder to install, harder to maintain and usually end up performing worse than the simple ones. In this video, I'll show you two large homes running ultra-simple heat pump systems and I'll explain why they outperform the messier setups you see every day. So that you can stop copying bad habits, start designing systems that actually deliver and win more jobs by doing less, but by doing it properly. Property is in Horsham, it's a five-bed detached house with 230 square meters of floor area built in early 2000s. I used software called Spruce to calculate the heat loss and it came to 8.7 kilowatts using air changes of 0.6. That's what I would use for more modern properties. We're going to run pipe work from this unit straight through the wall, so there will be very little exposed pipe work, through the garage, up this wall, above this door, and I've pre-drilled a couple of holes from the top floor from a bedroom above the garage to run the pipes and I got a bit lucky because I missed the light by 10 mil, maybe. From the garage, we go in this cupboard. Pipe work will be 35 millimeters going all the way up to our plant room that will go, well, in the loft, let me show you. So in here, that's where the plant room will go. New invented cylinder in place of this uh, cold water storage cistern. And Martin and Marian are sorting this out, removing the header tank. They will have to put it back because uh, we're not going to be ready to fire the system today. So they're just moving it, making space for new cylinder. And today we do have a dream team. We've got uh, Marie, Martin and Marian. So I went up all the way to the letter M to find decent people. So, you know, up halfway up the alphabet now. Hopefully I don't have to go to num letter N soon. And we're going to run that pipe for that I showed you downstairs. From somewhere there, uh, we have to crawl into that tiny roof over there and take our pipe work all the way to here. And then obviously Wiesmann has this big internal unit. We're going to put a piece of ply here in front of the cylinder and put that unit right, right here. Let's protect this edge so the cylinder doesn't get ruined. Yeah, like it's always been here. Day number two, and it's a bit manic here. We've got plasterers on site, builders on site. Murray's finishing outside pipe work. We've got primary pipe work run all the way to the loft, through the garage, through the bedroom, and to our new plant room. Cylinder in place, internal unit in place. And let me show you what's going on inside. This is airing cupboard on the first floor, and Martin is already draining the uh, hot water cylinder. All of that is coming out. Right, what are you up to here? <laughs> we are connecting the hot and the cold. So the hot's going to come up from here all the way up to the top and join the top of the cylinder. And the cold is currently here. So we're going to take, do the same, come up this one on the inside. And on this board, we will put the combination valve and send it all out and then join onto this pipe here which will be the balance cold, and that goes down to the rest of the house for cold water. Day two is done, and we've got plant room pretty much assembled. As you can see here, the cylinder, new cylinder is connected and running on an immersion heater. And all we have left to do is to insulate the pipe work here, remove the old boiler. And tomorrow we should be probably pretty good to go for the electricians to connect it and run the system. So a three day install. I don't think it's too bad. Just a little bit of insulation to be finished here. The paving has been fixed, and the base is done and nicely, I think you call it grouting, pointing around it. So that looks super neat. Marian did a beautiful job. That's where a heat only boiler used to be. Flu is fixed and outside, Marian did a, again, for a plumber. Wow, amazing bricklaying job. Have a look at this. And while we're here in the utility room, let me show you what we've done for the pipe work for the ground floor manifold. I cut out the dry lining from a partition wall. It's a breeze block 
four inch partition just to hide those pipes as much as we can into the wall so this boxing will be minimal just behind the architrave and here and Martin is behind that wall finishing the manifold that was installed previously by JK flooring and that's the uh, old airing cupboard uh, we've got our flow and returns coming from the loft from the internal unit and this is flow and return going to the radiators on the first floor and then flow and return that you saw uh, going to the manifold downstairs why is it done in this strange way the reason being is uh, in the very near future the owner will install under for heating himself to the first floor once he's done it he will cut those two pipes here and here and put his manifold on this wall right here and I've got another wise strainer because we will flush the rats but I want to keep rats with another strainer to make sure uh, that old open vent pipes or rats are not going to contaminate the new system too much and in here we are ready to start pressure testing the system we've bypassed this little unit because we don't want to use resin for for no reason and I'm gonna leave Marie on site tomorrow on her own to flush the system, demineralize the water, insulate all the pipe work while the electrician wire the whole setup. And me and the boys will go to another site to install another Wiesmann 10 kilowatt unit and come back here in a couple of days when the electricians are done and Marie, well, gives me a go ahead to commission this setup. So that's another 10 kilowatt Wiesmann unit. What we have to do, we have to build a base today, drop it on a base and do the plant room. It should be much quicker because this is a renovation, not a retrofit. So we've done uh, all the first fix already under floor heating on both floors as well. And very similar to the other job you've seen, this is 80s built, fully renovated, also around 220, 240 square meters of floor area and almost identical heat loss to the other property. And here we are upstairs. This is where the plant room is going to go. They left us nice big space for this plant room. And I'm going to ply line the wall and then paint it, looks nicer, it makes it so much easier to put the pipe clips in nicely and neatly. I started assembling the plant room, so internal unit is on the wall. Primary pipe work from the heat pump is now connected. Cylinder is also in place. Let me show you what's, what we've done so far. So, this is flow coming from the heat pump. This is our heat meter. Below it is a temperature sensor on the flow, temperature sensor on the return, air separator, then that's flow going to the uh, heating, coming out to the heating, that's from the heat pump, that's return going to the heat pump, uh, strainer and fill and flush valve here. And you probably can hear press gun outside through the pipe work. Uh, Martin's connecting the heat pump outside. System has been running for the weekend. It was a very cold weather and it's performing really, really well. Uh, don't take my word for it. It's monitored right here. So you can go to the description in the video, find the link to this monitoring and see live performance of this setup. And it is as simple as it can be. Pipe work from the heat pump, going to here to the internal unit, pump inside, just one pump for the whole system, diverter valve, diverting it to heating on flow here, return here from heating, or hot water cylinder behind this partition, flow and return again. We have no volumizers because the system is always running as one big zone, so we don't need more volume. We have no buffers because we size the system and pipe work the way that one circulator, one pump inside this unit can take care of the whole system, so it doesn't have to be over complicated. And we have no zoning, because on weather compensation you really shouldn't be zoning. Because weather compensated systems only extend the energy being lost at any given time from the property. If you turn zones off, then other parts of the property have to compensate and it's not going to cost you less to run. And then if you want to bring the zones that were, are off back online, it will use way more energy to bring them back to the temperature as if it would have done otherwise if you just kept it as one big zone. So. You're losing comfort, you're probably losing money by having less efficiency, and you're gaining nothing. You can temperature limit it though, set setbacks on certain areas, drop them to 16 degrees, yes, but turning zones on and off on weather compensated setups on domestic properties most of the time makes no sense whatsoever. I 
We've done my pipe work on the plant room number two today, so that's all done with pressure testing. Tomorrow the electricians are here, they will wire this setup up and I'll leave Marie to insulate it, flush it and demineralize the system and I'll come back later on to commission it. Electricians have finished and we are about to start commissioning the system or we have started commissioning it and I've noticed something very peculiar. We have no flow through the system whatsoever. We've tried bleeding everything, checked all the valves, still no flow. So we went to the unit outside and found something very strange. So that issue here is there's a float here to prevent uh, refrigerant leaks, I believe. And if you feel the system through the return, it pushes that flow down and you end up with no flow in the system. So you have to reverse the flow or feel through, through the flow so the water pushes that flow back up or you crack a nut to release a little bit of pressure and that float goes up as well. I never had this situation before, so I was worried the heat pump was broken. Luckily, quick phone call to one of my mates and he told me what the problem was. He fits loads of uh, Wiesmann's, uh, Liam from Custom Renewables. Thanks for that tip. It's good to know, so if you ever have that issue yourself, now you know how to fix it. So here we have another five bedroom large property with a really simple system. I know some of you may think, but there's lots of pipe work here and cylinders, what have you. You would have a cylinder in any case on a large property, so that's always there. If you don't have a heat pump, you have a boiler of this size, and everything else is the same. Compared to most systems people would be putting in large properties, this doesn't have any thermostats, no zoning, no actuators under fretting, nothing. It literally has flow and return from the heat pump again to the unit, flow and return to the heating, that is all, nothing else, and obviously hot water cylinder. As simple as it gets, fully weather compensated and controlled only by the external temperature and a heat curve on this unit. You can't get those systems simpler than this. You also have monitoring as on the other job, so all of you can go to the link below and check the performance of this system as well. And my prediction is this is going to be in the top 5% of all the systems in the UK, simply because we've got underfloor heating on both floors designed to a very low flow temperature, designed to 35 degrees, but I bet it's gonna run much lower. I think it's gonna top at about 30, maybe 32 degrees, and that will guarantee a heating COP coefficient of performance of five or above. So super simple, super efficient system. If you want to know how to design and install systems like that, we are preparing a heating installation and design mega course. Go to the link below in the description as well and sign up to the waiting list to get early access. It's www.urbanheatingacademy.co.uk.